Okay. Okay. We're rolling. Rolling. So, it's kind of a different episode. Yeah. I guess I'll let you set it up, though. Yeah, so uh, today, well, this is the Mary and the Pharaoh podcast. Good morning, everyone. Or afternoon or evening, whenever you are listening. Um, we are uh, going to talk today about JJ's whole setup. Um, we get a lot of questions about that because he's holding down bass and playing guitar at the same time and he spent a lot of time figuring out his whole sound so we get a lot of questions about that and so we also just wanted to talk about it because it's interesting stuff um <clears throat> so recently JJ got himself the nicest piece of equipment he's had yet yeah, the or, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really fancy it's beautiful it's the helix. It's what level the is it? Helix. <laughs> the helix. Um, honestly, I don't even know. Just the floor model, I guess. Floor model. Is what it's called. And what about what's my old helix that you sold me then? Oh, uh, the, <laughs> my old one. Your old That's helix. That's the HX Stomp. It's the, called. So okay. it's like the small version. Cool. That, and that one is going amazing for and my I sound, and really I'm well loving it. You. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. I can. I can tell like the. The difference in like it's a, a little bit of electronic sound as opposed yeah. to like a really natural wood sound. I know. Oh, for sure. That's but, the one uh, thing with, uh, yeah, like the modern modeling technology. It just Sometimes can't it's very quite... digital sounding. Yeah, you know I mean? like I, you know, it's like you right just word, can't but... make a natural frequency in a digital fashion. I mean, you can get <laughs> so close, yeah. but natural is natural. I know what you mean. <laughs> no, I know. And that's, I don't know. Well, I guess I'll get into it later. But no. anyway, so that's going great for me. And then Jay upgraded to this uh, this floor helix. So, and this is how he... And then this is not how you're able to access the bass sound, though. You have to do that through a separate pedal, correct? Right. So it's kind of crazy. So okay. I guess we should start from the beginning. You want to give it a rundown? Well, I guess, like, so when <laughs> we started playing as a trio, I was playing in the open tuning... That I'm using now, but tuned lower, so it was like open C and open C sharp. Yeah, because the open tuning is something that you did years ago, and that's been right. your style of playing. And right, the, so it kind of just suited thing. us. And then I realized, like, we're doing so many like boom chuck rhythms that I'm like covering the bass anyway. Yeah, I feel like we were doing well. It wasn't even trio yet. I feel like we were we were pulling a lot of duo gigs. Sure, yeah. And I think you found yourself. You know, we we're playing a lot of folk tunes. I think at the time, mm. and um. And you found yourself covering those bass lines just out of, just naturally, that's what you do as a guitar player, I think, in those mm -hmm. situations. Right. And so, yeah, so you were doing that, the boom check thing you were talking about. And I think, like, just the sound of, a, you know, a six-string guitar with a female vocal is, like, the sound. You know what I mean? Like, they just go so well together. So I yeah. feel like what we did was just expand <clears throat> on that into more of, like I guess, a rock setting. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I'm just saying the same thing that well, I think we got so to like... a place where we realized that, like, you know, we have so much freedom with you playing the bass because as far as communication goes, like, you don't have to communicate with an outside party to, like, change a key. <laughs> right. Like, you know, the only person that you need to let know about that at this point is me. Right. And I can take a second to get there if I need to. Right. And, um, and so it really, it gives us so much, such a broad artistic like a creative range on stage like mm. we can go anywhere we want because you're doing all of that at this point and i think it really makes it it's just really fun i enjoy yeah, it no, I, I enjoy it because i can tell that you can just take it anywhere at any point because you are the bass player and guitar player and um yeah it's super fun to jam like that i think uh the songwriting has become kind of unique because yeah. you've had to create sounds create ways to express songs around the sound that you're working on so yeah. No, Back to sure. the drawing board. Right. <laughs> no. Okay. But I guess then you encourage me. Okay, so we were playing without a bass pedal or anything. It was just me and a lower tuning. Mm -hmm. And it just sounded kind of like, I don't know, grungy. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's and then true. you kept encouraging me. You're like, well, why don't you just try a bass pedal? And I was like, no. But then I finally did. <laughs> you said no several times. Yeah. That's our. I mean, I, I don't think I was like pushing you. I think I was just. on a pedal, I guess. <clears throat> that just kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. I just honestly, I think uh, I love when people kind of create their own styles of playing. I love like uh, Charlie Hunter. Right, obviously, yeah. he's like a the most obvious yeah, person to refer to who's Charlie doing Hunter that. Charlie Hunter on every episode of this podcast. <laughs> you know what's funny though? A lot of podcasts that I just listen to 
I hear his name mentioned a lot as well. Oh, really? So it's funny. Yeah, a lot. Of, I don't know. He's just a, a unique uh, oh, no, pillar, I think, as far as his choir. music. I've been and, a fan um, for like 15 years or something. Well, there you something go. Like that, yeah. It's just impressive to me. And I love any time people come up with different ways to play their instruments. I love that. Yeah, and I know. Me too. I think I just realized, too, like we were really trying. It's really difficult to be in a full band sometimes, I think. It's hard to find people who want to commit to one thing. It's hard to find, it's hard to create a band. And I think like you and I were really hungry to like be playing regularly and have a regular thing. Yeah. And we realized that like, not only could we create our own sound, but we could create so much freedom as far as how we play, how we travel, how we do our thing. And it's really been fun. Yeah. <clears throat> I concur. So, yeah. Um, all right. Well, I guess I'll start walking through all this. So I guess uh, the first thing is people ask, like, where's the bass sound coming from? Right? Yeah. So I guess we'll just go through the whole signal path. And if it gets confusing, you can stop me. Yeah, and so I'm pretty lame in with this, so I can help ground y'all who are not up on Jay's level of mechanical oh, <laughs> of electronics on Jay. <laughs> I don't think I'll alienate too many people. No, uh, yeah, you won't. I mean, this stuff is... Artists. You can explain things well. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. Um, all right. All right, so it starts with the guitar, which I have an open E tuning. Um, from the guitar, it goes, you know, out a regular quarter-inch cable. First thing I'm going into right now is the... Boss OC3. So some people know about this pedal. It's got kind of like a little bit of a cult following. <laughs> but it, um, <clears throat> when you put it on, you can uh, have it only affect some frequencies. The the bass modulation. So really, like I kind of go from low E up to kind of cuts out around high B. Okay. Still kind of in there, but it cuts starts cutting out around there. Um, so that kind of gives me like that. So it's the same thing if uh, that's without the pedal. That's where the pedal. See so how the octaves down in there too. The low octave. Um, that's so hard to explain for some reason. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay. So from then the pedal it goes into the helix. Uh, sometimes I run other pedals first, but we'll save that for the part two of the video. Yeah. We, or the part two of the episode. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, from the Boss OC3 goes into the Helix. The can I just stop you for a second? Yes. So, like, the Boss o OC3 pedal, it's you can literally just... You decide what frequency it stops on. So, say you tune mm -hmm. to low C, mm -hmm. you would shift... Would you have to shift the pedal for that? Yeah, like, I guess so. You yeah, know, I so like, see what I want to do with it. Yeah. Interesting. So, that pedal is just based on the frequency of the sound that's coming out. Um... That does yes. that question doesn't even make any that was sense. A little confusing My mind, there. yeah, I don't understand this stuff very well. Okay, go ahead. So back back to where you're uh, going into the helix. Okay, so yeah, so the guitar line from the boss is just the you know, regular guitar signal, and then there's also the bass signal. So it comes out in stereo. So uh, that comes out separately, the bass yeah, and guitar? Yeah. And oh, then okay. I glue them back together in the helix. So once it's in the helix, the Wait, what are the separate outputs then on the the boss pedal that is that's giving you that so it's called like the direct out and bass out or something i forget oh so yeah. there's an actual bass out so yeah, it picks yeah. up that signal right so i can turn the bass up <clears throat> the low octave up or down just by itself okay yeah okay um so from there can't remember what it was now <laughs> well i didn't realize that it isolated the signal from the pedal yeah into the board at that point that's what i was wondering right okay yeah no so yeah it's pretty sweet dude yeah um so the so i sent a guitar signal through kind of a typical guitar signal chain um it's essentially just a couple pedals into an amp into a speaker so what well, i guess for the gig on friday when we do the video i'll show how i use an actual tube amp and put it inside this but for right now i'm just going <coughs> to use the amp modeler so on the guitar signal it goes in i hit a volume pedal which is not really working right now something's going on with it i have to ask helix that's just built into the board yeah. that's built in the board yeah and then from there i got all these pedals off right now but i just have a compressor a tube screamer a delay some reverb oh and then two cool things that i started doing kind of recently was running the signal through um 
like always on just a little bit of harmonic tremolo, but I turn it off so it's not really wiggling the pitch at all. It's just swaying things back and forth, left and right. Ooh. And it kind of gives it a little bit more of a, uh, like some space, you know what I mean? So when we set it up in stereo on stage, it just sounds really wide. So you'll kind of hear it like, I'll just play some chords. Like and I also have a auto pan on, which does the same thing. So that's off and that's on. It's really, really subtle. But it kind of just helps me get like that Pat Metheny stereo thing, especially I too. Guess, <coughs> and I feel like we delay. should mention that because a big part of the sound that we are both able to access now is everything that we're playing is in stereo. Right. And yeah. that's how we set up our own PA or if we're at a gig with a sound guy, yeah. like we make sure that they know that we want to be in stereo. Right. Like, And we want stereo monitors coming yes. back at us. Um, Absolutely. So. Because that I think in not to pat ourselves on the back, but we've been getting a lot of compliments about how big the sound is Yeah, how full between it is. the three of us. And I think a lot of that's coming from both of us really taking advantage of a stereo signal. See, and that's you know what, what I, I think too. I think what people, what, you know, what a lot of people aren't realizing is that the stereo sound is making that really full. Um, right. Yeah. It sounds awesome. And now I see that you're even amplifying that effect more with your just basic signal. Like right. Getting, so. Yeah, for sure. And then, like I was saying, when you put delay on that too, to me, this sounds just so like wide. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not necessarily like loud to clean it up a little bit. saying the volume you can almost bring back come back on the volume because so much is being expressed through the space right yeah at least that's what i'm going for yeah at least i try to and then uh i'm normally not like a compressor kind of fella like i never really used one back in the analog days what does a compressor do i never understood that so it limits the sound how loud and how quiet it can get so it kind of people talk about how it squishes the sound okay so it brings what like compresses it? It compresses it, <laughs> yes. Okay. So it brings up the quiet stuff and keeps the extra loud, spiky moments down. Are you still hearing them or are they just being cut out? Well, allow me to demonstrate. So uh -huh. here's no compressor. <laughs> So what happens is it adds a little bit of sustain because it's bringing those quiet moments up. You can kind of hear it just still go. Floating there. And it kind of keeps things tighter. Yeah, I definitely noticed the tightness of it right away. You know, it kind of just glues that stuff together. One thing I don't like about a compressor though is it makes everything like a little noisier and brighter sounding, so I sometimes have to like darken it up. said darken it up you did that on and your guitar, guitar which is yeah. what <clears throat> just the what do you call it tone knob ah. uh, tone knob what else do I got oh and then I just used the uh tube screamer I got two of them a lot of people use I know that sounds like I'm ripping off Trey from fish right now but really like why because he's got two. two tube screamers and a compressor that's like his thing oh okay but really like with the two <laughs> tube screamers I'm kind of I guess this is what he does too, but I'm kind of going for more of the Steve Ray Vaughn thing. So one's light and one's really hot. Um, and I got to be honest, I don't like using over or like overdrive pedals, and especially in the Helix. Like it's just like the most digital sounding thing ever. Gotcha. So really, um, when I'm using my Vox, I'll get mostly distortion from that, 
and then hit it with a Nobles Overdrive and do that like the old fashioned way. Mm -hmm. But I just use this, you know, like. Well, wait, so if you're miking your Vox, you don't (laughs) use this screamer? I don't use any of the overdrives in the Helix, no. Okay, gotcha. They just sound like. Do you have a pedal that's. Yeah, that's what the Nobles is. That's like gotcha. the overdrive Gotcha, that's a separate pedal. pedal. Yeah, Okay, yeah. okay. Um, so yeah, so here's what well, Quiet Tube Screamer. But I'll put this on for like bigger chords and stuff. Like that. Good. Okay, so what's the other one? Loud. Wait, now go with no screamer for a second so I can. Okay. It's a light one. Okay. That kind of thing. And then here's the loud one. I don't have one set up right now, but... Oh, you know what I should do, too? If you want that, like, David Gilmore kind of thing, I like to run the compressor into the tube screamer, the light one, okay. with some delay, and it sounds really... uh. Okay, well, let me show Like This is without the compressor, so you kind of get, like, that... Or this is without the overdrive, I mean. This is the compressor without the screamer. Right. Okay. But um, so that's like that, that kind of a thing. And then you put the. But still smooth. It's not too like raw '80s, like right. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Then I, I don't know if I had enough memory or whatever storage. I don't even know. For what? To set up a chorus pedal because I've been using that quite a bit too. He's saying he wants to set up a chorus oh, pedal. Sorry, yeah, my face is like that. Well, I don't know. He can also just edit this shit out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's sweet. <clears throat> I've, been used, I've never used to use it. Sounds that. very talking headsy. Dude, it sounds like 80s. Is... Yeah, but I like it. That sound really is like, has a place these days. It's a little warbly. Oh, man. Um, 
All right, then, so... What else have I got going on here? We like gotta do one of these where I play my fiddle and we just fuck Dude, around shit. with it. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> fiddle two. sounds so crazy because it has so much sustain. Uh, then I use just a little bit of plate reverb. Actually, I got kind of a lot right now because I've been screwing around. A little, what did you call it? It's called plate reverb. Plate That's what reverb. it's emulating anyway. This is still just digital stuff. Um, sometimes, though, when I use the Vox, if I'm using a, like, so like the tube amp, I'll run a reverb pedal that I really like called the Boing by J Rocket pedals. Okay. Um, in between the two channels on the Vox, between the bright and the dark channel. So it gives like that spring emulation that sounds like a spring reverb tank inside a like a fender tube amp, you know, give or take. So it kind of makes like the Vox when I use it, you know, kind of have its own character because it's like almost sounds like a distorted like tweed deluxe or something with a uh, spring reverb tank. I don't know. Huh. I don't know if that's true. Where did you come up with that? Is, did you... I can't even remember. I feel like somebody famous probably does that. I'm just drawing yeah. a blank. You know who maybe does that actually is Rick Holmstrom. He plays with Mavis Staples. He's like her MD. Yes, I, you've I, you mentioned him. He's many like times. he's one of my favorite guitar players ever. He's got like the best sound and feel and everything. But um, <laughs> he, uh, I think I saw him do that on a on a. Facebook post or something, but I could yeah. also be falsely crediting him. Oh, that. Either way, he's got a great sound. I will say he was the guy I like uh, messaged him before on social media. Super chill dude, but he was the one that recommended I get a Vox. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, huh. it's a fucking great Dude, you're in love with that thing. <laughs> Your entire life revolves around, well, no, I don't mean it. Not, not to be <laughs> It's like <clears throat> the Helix or the Vox. No, the Vox, or can it, and I really feel like, this kind of goes back to one of our first podcasts where we talked to Dave Abair, Dave and Matt Abair, and you guys were talking a lot about, like, the Helix versus the amp sound, and, like, a lot of times when it comes down to it, it's, like, convenience almost. It's like, can I bring my amp? Like, Dude, fuck yeah, sure. I'm going to, or, going on a tune you know, or is somebody else going to bring my amp? Then fuck yeah, let's bring it, or, right. you know, then... But if it's a matter of like flying somewhere or convenience, like right. this thing is amazing and it Dude, sounds great. Dude, it really great. is. Like, so I got by the, itself, like I forgot to mention, I got the amp mod I'm using. It's just the, it's called the Jazz Rivet 120 Rivet. How do you say that? What is it? I can't see it. The I don't know. It looks like Rivet to me, but I'm just gonna. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's supposed to be like the Roland uh, Jazz Chorus JC. 120, I think is the name of that amp. Oh, you know what? Um, then it's Rive. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but I just really like it because, like, to me, when I, it's okay. It's like when so I. So what have, is this now? Oh, it's the amp that you chose right, to run on your Right, so it's like an Helix. amp model, right? So it's. Like is there a not a amp. box on here? There is, oh. right? But it's like I can hear the difference between. You know what I mean? It's so like, it bothers you because you have a real box, right? It's like, but why this am one I you don't have emulate. a real jazz rivet, it's so like you I can't compare it. <laughs> right? Exactly. So I'm like, I'm just, and I think too. So this is emulating like a solid state amp. So to me, it's just like I'm embracing the fact that this is like a digital. Platform. What is a solid state amp? What does so that that's, mean? I couldn't give you a very good definition other than it's not a tube amp. It's okay. solid state technology as like, opposed to tube technology. A little more modern and right. Like they started making them in like the '70s, I think. And they just have a different sound and feel and characteristic. Mm -hmm. Most guitarists prefer the sound, tone, and feel of, uh, of like a sound tube and tone. It's the same thing. But, uh, of a tube amp, yeah. yeah. With some exceptions, like B.B. King played a solid state amp. We all love B.B. King. Hmm. You know, and, the, and then like a lot of jazz guys use oh. solid state amps for like that really clean sound mm -hmm. that they have. Or like pedal steel players will use solid state amps. Yeah. So I'm just trying to embrace that with yeah, there's this a place setup. for everything. So. Yeah, <laughs> as opposed to getting like that natural crunch out of the Vox, I'll just try to keep this like really clean. Like, like that's pretty squeaky, yeah. you know, like squeaky clean. That's beautiful sound. Key. Do I have that on my Helix? Like I can choose what amp I go through. I don't think you're going through an amp because you don't have. I don't even know to be honest. Like, yeah, it would be cool if I could get like an acoustic amp to go through. Oh yeah, then sometimes I use the volume pedal. That's always fun. Oh, you know what? Uh, we should cool. even talk about the bass. I didn't even get into that. So then the bass line 
is really simple. So let me uh, check this. Yeah, where's the bass signal going? I'm turn the guitar signal off while I just hear the bass. So see how gross and bland that is? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I have to blend it with the guitar or it just sounds like so bad. Wobby. You know? like, it's, like, <laughs> it's like no attack to it. Yeah. But so I run that through just like a little bit of a delay to think of it. Um, then a compressor. Then a modular, or no, what is this thing called? This is a filter. So it's like the Qtron. And that just, and I have it go, I don't even understand what this stuff means sometimes, but it it goes <laughs> down. So it gives it like a lower attack. Um, I think it's the way to word that. I I lower, okay. And then I bring it through an amp mod, which is where some of that fuzz is coming from, which I actually don't really like, but it just glues it with the guitar better. Huh. That makes sense, because if this is like super modulated clean, it like that sounds better there, you know? Mm -hmm. But when I have everything up on the guitar too, it, it's like too squeaky, clean, rubbery sounding or something. Gotcha. I yeah. don't know, I'm like changing this as I go too, because it's like, you know, work in progress at all yeah, times. Yeah, and it depends on the full sound and it depends on what you're playing to, so. Yeah, then I just bring the bass through a little bit of an EQ, the volume pedal, and then I boost the signal a little bit more with a, it's supposed to be like a DI, it's like a fake DI box, I think. <laughs> a fake DI with the so fake weird, quotation like, marks. Everything's not real, but it still works so remarkably similar to how like the real mm. things work mm -hmm. so it's really like disorienting mm -hmm. sometimes but yeah i'll just i don't know i just like i said it's all making it up as i go you know what i mean but uh what was i gonna say i feel like i had a point to that little tangent i was about to go on <laughs> oh because you were trying to explain more about the bass oh i was gonna say we should really talk about i'm just kind of noodling over here but how a lot of our songs work and a lot of the improv works is like, you know, I'm playing a lot of bass mostly. So like you are, yeah. Like even I'm trying to think of a good example. Like so to me, like first thing I'm thinking about is the bass part of that like what my thumb's doing because mm -hmm. there I'm playing like finger style um so it's kind of like if you're looking at me play it looks like I'm kind of doing like those boom chuck things it kind of all comes out of that like see like the thumb's just kind of doing that yeah and then just add the fingers in it kind of almost like all just fits together like a piano piece kind of you know what I mean yeah like, exactly organ, that's like what I'm going for anyway. kind of, you have to think about it as like left hand right hand but yeah and it's fingers. almost like people always say things like oh you're splitting your brain in two and it's like nah I think it's just it's all one instrument and like I try I'm trying to think more like um you know like a pianist or an organ player or a a drummer where everything is kind of like what's the word I'm looking for it's polyphonic, the word poly. <laughs> it's bad that I can't remember this stuff. But I just mean like, um, like, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to think of like two lines going at this all the time. And like once in a while I check back in with the two of them or something. It's kind of like, no, it's like, it's all one thing, you know? And I think like when we first started setting this up, remember I would, before the Helix, I would run the boss uh, the guitar line into a guitar amp and the bass line into a bass amp yeah. and do it like, you know, real world. And it just sounded um, bad, especially when I <laughs> separated the guitar and the bass amp because I thought it would sound like bigger, but it just warbled everything in a weird, not, I don't, I don't even think it was like out of phase or chorusing or anything like that. I think it was just like that bass sounds not very strong on its own. You know what I mean? So yeah. then even when I put the guitar amp on top of the bass amp for myself, I like heard it so much better. It was like, oh, they got to be like one unit, you know, yes. like I can't separate them and stereo them out, like pan them left and right or anything like that. They got to just be like glued together and yes. it sounded so much better because then it, it's like the attack of the guitar with the, with the 
big fat butt at the base. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, because it's like you know, it just kind of feels like I'm dribbling a giant basketball or something. <laughs> um, and then just like. that bottom to the guitar exactly because honestly know. like a lot of guitar players play like that anyway like right. you're kind of covering exactly the bass, yeah and if you're and playing just jamming by yourself like you're gonna be doing that shit anyway so just, that's you're when, just dropping the tone so it sounds right. like you're yeah that's without the bass yeah like it sounds good or whatever <laughs> but then put the bass with and it just adds that whole low dimension. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know, I keep saying that, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? And I just kind of find myself, like... that I want to sit on versus what I would do if it was just the guitar signal, you know? Going on a tune. And then, like, in a rock thing, like, when we're doing, you know, it's like I might do, like... try to like anchor the lines it's probably not the best example because i just started playing it's like literally just picked up my guitar this morning for the podcast <laughs> what but i just feel like i'm playing like shit but i guess i always said um <laughs> you could uh, yeah but you know what i mean like say we're like improvising i'll try to like incorporate a bass line that i keep coming back to and kind of solo in between the spaces yeah ideally that's when, when things are like cooking yeah i feel <laughs> like when we get moving and we're like kind of jamming and it's building like you kind of come up with these driving bass lines mm -hmm. and you'll kind of hang down more in that register while I'm going and you'll still be playing guitar stuff but you you do you find these bass lines and then you start to like develop them and definitely hang in there yeah I think when I just listen and try to lock in with the kick drum yeah for sure everything else just falls together you know what I mean it's like before I know it I'm playing a cool bass pattern you know you're like locked into it we're all just kind of together so i feel like that's like yeah the centerpiece <laughs> it's about staying together and it's funny the way you were talking about like your realization that like the guitar and the bass needed to be together because <clears throat> your metaphor about like a band being like a big rocking boat that they all need to be together like it makes sense oh yeah you I know use a lot it of makes sense in that too like the more together it can what i feel like you always reiterate my own metaphors at me, and I can't remember what. You're like, what the what? Like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like the <laughs> boat? What the boat? What? Where are you? Um, but yeah, like if you're, you know, you're one unit, and then if you can lock in with the drummer, and then it's just me, you just sound very together. As yeah, long and as I, I think can get on board. <laughs> um, yeah, like musically getting around with a three piece, like, you know, kind of, I don't, I don't want to say it, coming from a jazz thing but you know what I mean like I listened to a lot of jazz growing growing up I'm still growing up when I was <laughs> yeah uh, the uh there's like an art to each kind of you know there's like the trio thing there's the quartet thing there's a quintet thing you know what I mean yeah. it's kind of like a 
same thing for classical music. music. You know, like the for way sure, that you yeah. play in, in any of those formats is very different musically. Right. And I think uh, for me, like, I had to take a big step back from just like, you know, guitar playing. <laughs> <You're so stupid. laughs> like, what I'm doing for this band is like, it's a very new thing for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a big, it's a big step back because you're, I mean, so advanced with guitar oh, and so shit. able to like play the notiest, craziest shit. But this is more about like holding it down. This is and, like, like what all can about you just the rhythm? And exactly, keeping... it's about the feel, the rhythm, yeah. and like how are you putting this all together? And it's yeah, yeah, it's a fun project. Yeah, I know for sure. I think um, to you're asking earlier like how I practice or we were talking about like practicing mm -hmm. and I think like with this like the biggest thing I do is I won't be able to hear the click on here cause I got it oh yeah cause I will uh, yeah like all I'll do is get a metronome going um just google it or you google know what I really do folks. a lot too is all there's no excuse anymore for yeah, not practicing right a metronome there. cause you can fucking google it I got one <laughs> satellite in seconds but uh put the click on and um and just like really practice keeping myself as centered as possible and then keep reducing the clicks so say I want to practice something at um 100 beats per minute whatever you know I'm just picking an easy number um or say it's like yeah so it's like I'll put the click on all four beats first so it's at 100 then I'll bring it down to 50 so it's at just two and four and then I'll put it on just like beats two and four. Then uh, put it down to put it on just. Uh, I would never go this slow because that's like really slow. I kind of bottom out around like 40, <laughs> 35 right now. <laughs> that's on a good day. But um, put it down half of that so it's only on beat two. And okay. just try to keep. And then record myself playing too and make sure it just feels good and steady. And on beat two? Yeah, just the click on beat two. So it clicks okay. just once per measure, and that click is beat two. So it's one, two, or one, three, four, one, three, four. Exactly. Why two? Um, because it's like the first back beat. Maybe you can put it on beat four oh, okay. or two. Either one, I think, is good. Would you say two or what? Two or four. Four. Okay. Um. Then uh, yeah. Huh. That's <laughs> interesting because I think a lot of people think like you know. You want to practice faster and faster and like that's the opposite of how you <laughs> taught me how to practice I think like what I well, you know like what I've been on lately is trying to make myself um, you know responsible for his for the time you know mm -hmm. and make sure it's not I'm checking it like so that way the the metronome when I the reason I practice that is because the metronome is I don't have as many reference points Mm -hmm. so, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's yeah. like the responsibilities comes from me, as opposed to just being like, click, I'm right, click, I'm right, <laughs> click, I'm right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's a, like not having that crutch. Then. For sure. And that way, you're more responsible on stage, and you and the drummer can work together rather than one of you. Leading, right? like well, yeah, yeah. Is that how bass and drums generally are supposed to work? Like, like they should both have excellent rhythm and work together. Yeah, I mean, I or think... does one generally fall on the other? I mean, it's a loaded question, you know. I would say, uh, I would say the bass is the biggest anchor of the band. Okay. And ultimately, like, the biggest time setter, if that's the way to put it. Yeah. The timekeeper. <laughs> yeah, and then I think the drums color that and give that, um, like, texture and, and. Gotcha. It's so See, hard yeah, to I feel like a lot, of, like, like, you know from a point of view where like if I had thought nothing about music very deeply I would just assume like the drums holding it down yeah. and everybody you know but yeah, I think yeah. when you get into it you're like no it's the bass the bass is the timekeeper yeah, my kids watched so. this movie and it was there's this oh wait it's actually a famous actor I can't remember his name but he he's in this kid's movie and he he's the timekeeper he's cloned himself like 14 times so there's like 14 of oh, him and, and then they find out too. it's him and he pulls down his sleeve and Wait, he has like no, I'm all he has like 20 watches on his arm and he, and they're like you're the timekeeper and he's like wah, 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 wah. So, I thought you were talking about that clock guy in Boss Baby oh no that's yeah that's different this is a different movie Boss Baby though oh, what a great movie 
Uh, well, sweet, dude. Is there anything else we should talk about? Um, I'm trying to think if I have any other questions. So, when you do have your Vox plugged into this, like you will on Friday at Lulu's, hmm. how is that going to look? Um, great question. So, what I do for that one is I have basically the same setting, only I, uh, instead of having an amp mod, I have, um, a loop there. So, I, like, a send and a return. So, I'll send the guitar path to the Vox mm -hmm. and it just goes right in like it normally you know like you're plugging into an amp and then out of the Vox though, so that's the first thing you go into so I would go like the signal would look like this and we'll okay. show it at the gig Friday but it would go guitar if I'm not using any pedals I'll leave those out for a second just to avoid confusion but it would okay, go yeah. um, guitar into the octave pedal okay. octave pedal into the helix a line out of the helix into the amp for with just the guitar signal yep and then back then into a load box out of the box so i could bring the signal down to line level bring that back into the helix okay treat it with all these effects you know the delays and reverbs okay and such. so the box becomes your amp mod becomes like the it's amp not mod with yeah. inside the helix awesome. and then run it through the same like amp simulations and all that and everything else gets the same and then yeah. you can use all the same like, so it's really just like it's kind of funny like so it's the same exact setup, except that one little square there, that's the amp mod, uh -huh. has become this big contraption outside. Yeah. Where I send all these lines. But the other way I'm going to try to do it um, on Friday, as opposed to using a load box, I'm just going to run the box normal, and then put a mic in front of it, mic it, and then use the mic'd signal to get into the helix. Nice, yes, that'll see be See what cool. that sounds like. And then I wouldn't run it amp simulation or a cab sim or anything like that or an ir cool because it would already be, have the sound of the speaker if that makes any sense yes i think that does make sense yep. and we have timbo is it Ilium doing sound on yeah. friday yeah um so you know it's gonna be great and he'll He's be a great guy to try this with yeah for sure well hopefully we didn't bore the pants off too many folks yeah hopefully not um i didn't want to start this video too like any gear guitar video or podcast or anything like that always starts with so i've been getting a lot of questions about your gear, <laughs> but i like which i started like every video i like to but um yeah i don't know i guess like we really were getting a lot of questions about it yeah like, and that is how i started i was like after every show some like S at least people, yeah. two people are coming up and asking you like what's going on here yeah and yeah i think it's just it was good worth to talk explaining. about yeah, yeah for sure well, Good stuff. And then one day, maybe, yeah, so we are playing at Lulu's on Friday. We're going to have a yep. video to go along with this podcast so y'all can see. Like his, part two of this. Yeah, we'll part the, two. At the gig on Friday. So you can see exactly what he's talking about, what it looks like. We'll just give you the rundown. Oh, we should say, too, I, I guess we'll talk about this Friday. But, um, so I, should we just leave it for Friday? How do I, like, monitor all this and how I hear it? Um, let's leave that for Friday, because that good, might yeah. depend on our, like, we can show how our, like, yeah, our stereo we'll setup a, and stuff. That would be better with and, video. Um, I think all this would have been better with the video, but sorry. No, I think <laughs> it's good that we talked about it, and whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, cool. So, yeah, hopefully we will see folks on Friday. Um, Friday is the 20... 20... 23rd. 23rd. Friday at Lulu's downstairs. We are going to be downstairs, I think, right? That's what it sounded right. like. Yeah, because it's ticketed and downstairs. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it should be like, it's in that super cool lounge down there. Yeah, I haven't played down there. I love oh, the upstairs so room. Have you too, been though. down there? I've been down there, like, when I, maybe when I first moved here, or maybe one of the times oh, I was Oh, dude, out here. yeah, it's like this retro, like, red yeah, yeah, leather. Yeah, sure. Like, looks like it's a little dope. jazz lounge. It's yeah. so sweet, man. If you've never been there, it's also a great venue. I think a lot of people from Denver are starting to come down and. Um, play there and you know yeah, I guess I didn't realize their downstairs was even open yet um, then, yeah it's open for a little bigger like when they get bigger shows in yeah. we just did the upstairs that one time and then I yeah. think because they weren't doing downstairs shows yet but oh, they've, they've been like, getting some like some, oh, some, so some all those action. shows are downstairs that I've been seeing online I, I think so I yeah together, which or. is yeah it's awesome it's a great venue so it's, it's a really great venue for the Springs West Side area yeah, too because sure. you know we don't have a lot of cool places like that so um, anyway, so we got that. And then we're also going up to um, Leadville on Sunday, which I'm so excited about. We're playing at Freight. 
Um, it, right. It's this uh, amazing structure that was there. It was a railroad building, and they have turned it into a venue using all of the like the restored wood. I think they have this big outdoor stage they may have built this summer. So I'm not sure exactly, but I know it's like a ticketed event in Leadville on Sunday the 25th from 6 to 9 p.m. And um, we're going to have this fabulous drummer from Denver, Mark Emmons, with us um, at Lulu's and on Sunday. So we're really looking forward to that. While our man Chris Combs is out of town. And um, yeah, so hopefully we'll see y'all this weekend. Got some more stuff coming up. We're starting a col- collab with uh, Rocky Mountain Highway to the folks that do Meadowgrass. Um, we have made friends with them over the years. They have some fabulous uh, people on their board and uh, we're going to be working with them here um, in the very near future, which we are so excited about. Um, so please check out Rocky Mountain Highway and everything that they do.